a group of brass-bound mahogany boxes always look good together. And just with campaign chests, the brass banding and corners on the deep red of mahogany or teak is just such a wonderful look. Today I thought we could look at this jewellery box. It's a very nicely made box. Um, it's got a lovely handle to the top. If we go in a little bit closer, you can see that the brassware has got a gilt lacquer finish to it. That's tarnished in places and it's, uh, you've got some black marks to the top. Whereas most people might perhaps uh, get the wire wool and brasso out and uh, clean that up. That's not our taste at all. And of course, if you do do that, you're losing the gilt lacquer and going straight back to the brass and then you're going to spend your life cleaning it. For us, those dark marks are part of the age and the history of the item and add to it. Um, so this is a jewellery box and we can see that the lid is cushioned and lined in dark red velvet and that will help to hold the contents to the tray in place during travel. If we take out the tray, we can see that there's a fitting to the middle there to take a fob watch and then we've got two compartments either side just to uh, take whatever jewellery you might have. Also lined to the bottom in red velvet so you're not going to scratch anything if you put it down. But interestingly the well to the bottom of the box is not lined and doesn't have any dividers. So perhaps it was a dual purpose box, perhaps that would be for keeping um, papers in or something like that or maybe money. Uh, we're not quite sure. Um, but a nice small sized box. Now it's going to be um, getting towards the mid 19th century. That's quite a nice early handle which we typically associate with early 19th century uh, pieces of campaign furniture and boxes going on the shape of it. But if we look at these rounded edges, that points to us to it being a little bit closer to the middle of the 19th century. By way of contrast, here's a novel box and you can see these edges are much more angular. They don't have that rounded edge to them. Now it looks like um, the escutcheon has probably been replaced on this. If we come in a little bit closer, you can see it's quite nicely shaped. There is a little bit of a gap. Now, it's not uncommon on boxes like this for the escutcheon to pop out. They weren't uh, fitted in with, um, with screws or nails. And of course, they're gonna get far more wear than the straps. If we look at the straps there, we can see that you've got screws which have been filed down to give a nice smooth finish. Those are not gonna pop off. The escutcheon, which is just glued in, especially with wood shrinking, and the fact that it's going to get more use every time you miss with a key and you push it, you know, it might cause it to move a little bit. And so it's not uncommon for escutcheons to be replaced like this one. It's got what we call stay hinges, so that the top will support itself when open. And the original quite coarse green bays to the bottom. So an English... Um, mid 19th century jewellery box, very nice quality, great that it retains its original key and still of course very usable and practical today and it's got that great look of uh, brass strap work, gilt lacquer brass strap work on a nice deep red mahogany.